Hello YouTube, this is Bowtie Media, and this is a brand new review to Skrillex's Don't Get Too Close album. Well, it only took about 24 hours between Quest for Fire that released the other Skrillex album for this one to come out, Don't Get Too Close. And while Quest for Fire may have been an EDM-centric underground banger fest, uh, Don't Get Too Close is quite the opposite. Opting in for a more commercialized soundscape, Don't Get Too Close is by far the lightest project of Skrillex's to date. Pop Rap is essentially the name of the game here with a slew of features from the likes of Trippy Red, Blade, Kid Cudi, Chief Keef, Justin Bieber, and so many more. And after giving the EDM fans and community what they wanted with Quest for Fire, this LP is unapologetically a chart chaser. It's honestly a little strange to hear Skrillex lean so heavily into that commercialized sound. It's quite reminiscent of the kind of three tracks that were released one after another in 2021 with uh, Indie Ghetto, uh, Enma Cuarto, and Don't Go. Because honestly, those tracks weren't so loved when they were released, and this style in particular is what I believe to be his worst. But let's talk about the vocals here first. As we mentioned earlier, there are a ton of vocal features on this record. So much so that there isn't a single track of all 12 here that doesn't have a vocal feature. Of all 12 songs, there are 17 individual vocal performances. But for such a vocal-driven album, too many of the performances just sounded bland and uninterested. Of all of them, I would actually say it was Justin Bieber on Don't Go that was released back in 2021 that landed on this album that actually felt like he kind of cared the most. His singing and rapping on that track were highlights on the album for me, despite my lack of kind of interest in the track when it originally released two years ago, which is saying something about what the rest of the project is. Other than that one though, it felt like every other vocal performance here was either under-delivered or just half-assed. Let's take Kid Cudi on Summertime, for example. I understand that part of his style is that laid-back kind of audibles and the humming of the but uh, he literally sucked the life out of anything on this track. Now, I do think a large part of that is actually due to the mixing of his vocals not necessarily his performance in and of itself. Cuddy's quality in his vocals is highly determinant on the low end of his range. And it just felt like Skrillex kind of cut it out entirely. It's like he kind of neutered Cuddy's vocals here, not even giving him a chance to shine at all. And the thing is, this isn't just a one-time issue. All throughout the runtime, it feels like vocalist after vocalist are just being capped at the knees. And to be completely honest, it's not that egregious if it wasn't for Don't Go being on the track list. Again, going back to that Bieber and Don Tolliver collab, the mixing and vocal processing on that song felt right. It's not until you get to this song on the track list, on the listen through that you're like, oh my gosh, there's an actual change. Your mind recognizes something is different about the way that this song is mixed compared to everything else above it. And I think the best word to describe that is probably just flat, almost to the point where the mixing is carefree in a sense. If Don't Go and, well, the entirety of Quest for Fire, the album that came out a day prior, was like a bush or hedge that was very neatly trimmed, uh, don't get too close, the rest of the songs are like really messy with branches sticking out and weeds coming out of it. And to be fair, this style of mixing and mastering can be seen as raw and not trying to be too overproduced, but I just can't see it that way. But even if the mixing was on point, too many of the tracks either sound unconclusive or uninteresting. I personally have never really had an affinity for the cloud rap style of vocal performance that you see in the likes of Ceremony, Real Spring, and 3AM. But even without those individual vocal performances, the beats and back-end production feel like Skrillex putting in minimal effort to get this album done. The amount of intentionality between a track from Quest for Fire and Don't Get Too Close feel miles apart. Just look at the way that these were even released in 2023 when all the singles were coming out. Quest for Fire felt like it had more hype to it, where the Don't Get Too Close singles were sort of just there. They just showed up out of the blue here or there. Some of them were missing album artworks that sometimes they were featuring the wrong person. It just felt more messy and not as intentional. That really shouldn't be the case either, especially because these were practically released at the same time. Like, I would way rather Skrillex not sort of half-ass a project like this and just push it back a couple months, maybe, maybe even a year to put out something that's just as good or if not better than Quest for Fire. We did get a couple glimpses of light though throughout the track list and it's the second and third track, honestly, which I believe to be the best two in Way Back and Selecta. Way Back with Pink Panthers and Trippy Red is without a doubt the best track here and should be the foundation for the rest of the project yet isn't. Rather than having strictly a more ethereal vocal as the forefront of the track, Wayback is a simplistic drum and bass track that actually feels engaging without vocals attached to it. It's like the beat and vocals are actually complementary of one another here. What a surprise! Uh, rather than the beat just being merely a product of the vocal tone. 
And on a similar vein, Selecta with Beam is just as complimentary, but this time stylized as a club house track. On a bit of a side note, I actually think that this song, Selecta, individually is what Drake was trying to go for with Honestly Nevermind, an album that wasn't great that was released just back in 2022. And I think this song individually outshines anything on that Drake record, but that's a totally different point. Opening and closing the record, though, Skrillex does create some tonal cohesion from one album to the next. Starting with Don't Leave Me Like This, Bobby Rapp joins the fray once again, but this time a more kind of subdued vocal ad lib. And then Painting Rainbows at the end closes off the project, keeping it full circle with the nature of both BB being here on the final track and the not so subtle still here with the ones that I came with uh, in the middle first front half of the track. It's a neat little touch that I must say does help this album or these two albums go from being just albums to being more of an era. But in the end, Don't Get Too Close just doesn't hit the mark. We saw the creativity and intentionality that can go into a Skrillex record literally the day before with Quest for Fire's release. And just with those neutered vocal performances and dull beats, this album really could have been better. And with that, Don't Get Too Close by Skrillex will score a bow tied four out of 10. Well, let me know what you think of this album in the comment section below. What do you think? Is four a generous score? Is four way too overhated? Let me know what you think. Any and all comments in that comment section below. But other than that, I've been Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.